Jolly was taken aback when she noticed Anthony entering the coffee shop and making his way to her table. Jolly and her husband lived next door to Anthony and his wife Louise for over four years. They were both a little older than her, in their mid to late forties instead of mid thirties, but have become quite close to Brad and her. They've even taken some vacations together as couples with and without their children. Anthony, what a surprise, said Jolly, a little flustered and scanning the door. Shouldn't you be at work? Could say the same to you, he said calmly as he sat down across from her. I took the afternoon off for personal time. And assume the same for you? Jolly nodded. Stressful morning and needed a little recharge. That's all? Never knew you were a fan of coffee places like this. You're right, I'm not, Anthony said, looking into her eyes. But she kept looking away slightly. Honestly, I saw you come in here and decided to join you. We need to talk. Is there something wrong? Jolly said. Nothing with Louise, I hope. Anthony looked down for a moment and smiled at her. No, we're fine. Thank you for your concern. You and Brad have become quite important to us, and we know we can count on you if anything ever happens to either of us. I would never hesitate to do the same. That's why I needed to come here. Why? I'm fine. Just a little stressed, said Jolly. Have you slept with him yet? Anthony interrupted with a calm, lowered voice. What? Jolly's face went flushed. I don't know who. The guy that's the reason you keep glancing at the door is who? Anthony said. The truth. Have you slept with him or not? No, it's not like that. Jolly, with her face very flushed and hands starting to fidget. Anthony closed his eyes and smiled with shaking his head. He opened them and gently touched her hand like a father would. You need to listen to me. I'm going to tell you what's going on, what you probably think is going on, and finally, what he thinks is going on. It's really important. Jolly just nodded. He's charming, either younger or more successful than Brad. He seems to have some quality better than your husband and has been letting you pour out your soul to him. He also compliments you a lot. When you needed someone, he was there and sacrificed something to do it at some point. How am I doing so far? Jolly felt her body tense. How did you know? Does Frank? He suspects, of course he does, Anthony said. And you know he does without proof. I'm sure you've made him feel like an idiot for suspecting. How did I know? This is what happened. Two important occasions occurred in the last two weeks, and you missed both of them for two different excuses. Something happened to Mr. Charming, and he needed you. As a friend, and because you felt you owed him, you skipped your son's birthday and your ninth anniversary dinner to be with him. Nothing happened. We are friends. And this friend you are currently keeping from your husband because he wouldn't understand. This friend wants to know all about your husband, and you've told him even intimate details that you probably wouldn't share with me. Everything you tell he supports you and makes it seem like it's all Brad's fault. Whatever trouble you two are having. I bet he even makes Brad's suspicions of something happening as evidence of how horrible a husband he's being. Was it while you were missing the party or supper with your husband that he kissed you and confessed his attraction? Jolly's mouth dropped. How did you... When? She faced down and her hand trembled a little. When I missed our anniversary, he was down because an old friend died. It just happened but I stopped it before. Anthony nodded. So, that's a fair take on what happened. Because of your defensiveness, and the fact you're sitting here now waiting, I think it went a bit further than a kiss. No sex, but far enough that if you caught Brad doing the same, you'd consider it cheating. However, you think it's kind of Brad's fault because he's not being the husband you need, as Mr. Charming has been so kind to point out. He's just a friend, giving you something you think you're not getting at home. However, you are attracted to him, and getting that attention is a little thrill. But you're not going to cross that line. You probably convinced yourself that you haven't yet, but a big part of you already feels guilty and hopes to hell Brad never finds out. Are you going to tell him? Jolly said. So you admit I'm right so far then? Anthony said. I admit I am guessing on your feelings. Actions are easier to predict. We slept together, but I couldn't go through with it, Jolly said, her eyes watering. He understood and just held me as we slept. We did some things but kept our clothes on, mostly. Brad is being so stupid, and I was mad and drunk. And you pretty much proved he was right, Anthony said. No, I'm not telling Brad any of this. But he is going to find out. Okay, ready for what he thinks is going on. Mr. Charming sees an attractive woman that is taken. He sees vulnerabilities that he can push to manipulate. Reed isn't. Jolly started, but Anthony silenced her with a calm hand gesture. 
Mr. Charming knows this because he has experience doing this. Forgive the bad cliché, but this isn't his first rodeo. You see, you think you are his goal. You aren't stupid enough to not know he wanted to sleep with you from the moment you started seeing him behind your husband's back. Charming has you thinking that it's because of something special between you and he's providing what your husband is lacking. And Charming has been making damn sure to point out every single thing your husband is lacking. This is because it's not about you. It's about Brad. Mr. Charming is getting a thrill from knowing that he's taken something from Brad. That's why he convinced you to miss two very important occasions, to show he means more than Brad. It was no coincidence, the friend dying and whatever the other crisis was happened at the exact time, for you to miss both events. Brad's birthday in three weeks. Something will happen for you to miss whatever plans you have then, because it's all about Brad. He doesn't, Anthony raised an eyebrow. You were in the arms of Charming while your husband waited in a restaurant for an hour before you finally texted him you were standing him up. With a female friend at work that got food poisoning? Not even creative enough to give a name. Probably so Brad wouldn't look into it. You are waiting now for Mr. Charming while missing work. You've shown your current priorities. It certainly isn't your marriage. He wants me, Jolly said, that's all. He doesn't want Brad to know just as much as me. He doesn't even know my husband. No, Charming knows plenty because he's asked you for every detail. Through you, he knows Brad, Anthony said a little sternly. Mr. Charming knows damn well Brad has every right to be suspicious and that he can convince you that it's an overreaction. He wants that suspicion, that growing wedge between you two. Otherwise, there's no chance to finish the deal. Because, here's the thing, and listen good, I said it's about Brad, not you. Mr. Charming thinks he is going to get all he can get from you and then, once he knows he's fully stolen you from Brad and you are his, reveals his end game. Making sure your loving husband knows everything, and then he'll might continue the physical relationship for a bit. At least until he finds his next trophy. How do you know this? Did Louise? Anthony smiled. My wife and I have been faithfully married for many years. But I wasn't always married. You have two choices. Continue this affair, because you know that is what this is, and try to prove me wrong that's not going to end in sex, or will remain a secret. Because Charming isn't who I said he is. Or end it and have a hope of saving your marriage. Once Charming gets all that he's going to get, he's going to make sure Brad knows. Maybe even lie about getting farther than he did. Jolly started crying. Please, I can't. Brad can never know. Anthony went to her side, gave her a comforting hug, and whispered into her ear. Nothing. Not even a peck on the cheek without your husband being aware. Otherwise, I make damn sure he knows. Jolly, is this man upsetting you? Said a voice behind them. Anthony turned to see a younger man, tall and slender with a huge beard. Well, you must be Reed, I'm Brad. Anthony held out his hand to shake, and the other man slowly did the same. He grabbed Reed's hand and squeezed really hard. Anthony pulled him close to whisper into his ear as he bent one finger. Listen to me, you puke. Make a scene and this finger is broken. You will not speak to my wife, you will not speak of my wife, or I will end you. You're not her husband. Reed said in a pained voice. Who are you? Wrong. As far as you are concerned, I am. This is just between us. I'm the only one you're talking to this about, or else you got your fingers partly into the cookie jar, but don't risk losing your hand. She's not worth that, is she? No, no, definitely not, Reed said, rubbing his hand after Anthony released it. Such a waste of time. After two months, barely got anywhere with the frigid witch. Jolly was sure Reed didn't see the punch coming. With everyone silently watching, Anthony was standing with his arms up as Reed crawled up off the floor and hurried out the door. Self-defense, folks. Man was abusing my sister and you saw him get aggressive when I told him to end it. There were mutters of agreement and everyone went back to their business. Anthony turned back and said to Jolly, you have your second chance. Go home. Be the wife your husband deserves. I know it will be hard, but tell him that he was right to be suspicious, but you stopped before it was too late. Don't mention that I needed to intervene. It will be better for you. I know Brad, he'll be angry, but we'll want to get past this. Thank you, Jolly said, wiping her eyes. Didn't do it for you, Anthony said. I did it for Brad and to atone for a bit for my own actions in the past. Have a nice day. What's your opinion about OP? Thanks for joining us in our stories where revenge is served hot. Please consider subscribing to our channel to ensure your next chef remains loyal. Tune in for the next one to get your revenge appetite fulfilled. If you're below 18, hold on, it's not for the faint-hearted.